Now, January is National Braille Literacy Month, which seeks to raise awareness around the Braille literacy crisis, which we're going to talk about in a bit. Because, But located right here in historic Back Bay, the National Braille Press is the nation's premier Braille publisher and an innovator in the Braille community since 1927. Now, it also works to create affordable Braille-based technology that is accessible to all. As fewer than 10% of the 1.3 million people who are legally blind in the United States are Braille re readers, and only one in seven blind children in America are being taught Braille in school today. To tell us more, we've invited fellow BC alumni Brian McDonald. He is the president of the National Braille Press. And Marissa Parker, she is a proud and hardworking volunteer at the National Braille Press. And where, what town are you from? What's the shout out? Mattapoisett, Massachusetts. All right, there we go. There's the shout out. She wanted to get that shout out in there. Welcome to Urban Update. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to start with you, Brian, because a lot of us don't know really what Braille is, the official, very brief definition of Braille. I've got a book here of the Constitution of the United States in Braille, and if you can see it, it's you know you can feel through it. But what is the exact definition of Braille? Well, it's a system or a code of, uh, that allows blind and visually impaired people to read and write. And so it's comprised of dots, as you saw, that are raised that represent letters, symbols, and numbers. Yeah. Now, Marissa, you are Braille. You could, you, you could read. Yeah, I know you're still learning. You said it's always, you're always learning. But how did learning it, how would you describe the impact it's had in your life to actually know Braille? Well, I mean, learning Braille has had an enormous impact in my life in general because I've learned to read Braille from a young age, um, but just in a number of different areas in terms of um, editing papers for school or completing math problem sets or even learning the Braille music code. I mean, it just touches so many different aspects of my life and even just reading books for pleasure. I mean, I find that um, using Braille allows me to passively, uh, actively read rather than passively read. So it, it just touches so many aspects of my life that without Braille, I honestly don't know if I would be as successful as I am today. Excellent. And for our viewers, how old are you? You're not supposed to ask a lady their age, <laughs> but um, you seem so mature for your age. Thank you. Um, I'm actually, I'm 18 years old. I'm turning 19 in March, which oh. is exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm about that age. <laughs> are you? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Brian, for those who do not know, because I did not know this, what's the current state of Braille here in the United States and really around the world? Yeah. It's, it's amazing if you could go back in time. Around 1970, 50% of blind students could read Braille. And today it's dropped precipitously down to 12%. And it's, it's no one would, everyone says the same reaction, how could that be? But it's unfortunately a, a true fact, and, and there are a lot of reasons for it, but one of them is technology and talking computers and Braille to, uh, text to speech technologies where people said, oh, you won't need Braille anymore. You have talking computers, talking books. But the reality is uh, worldwide that happened, and there's a tremendous shortage of people that know Braille today as adults. It's yeah. been a, a big challenge. Um, now, I read some, you know, one fact that stood out was only 30% of blind people are employed. And of that, though, 90% are Braille. So big impact in the lives of, of folks. Yeah, as Marissa was saying, it's changed your life. And for those that have the ability to learn Braille or learn it at a young age, it, it clearly gives them more independence, ability to be employed, and, and, and have more freedom and educational opportunities. And, makes a big difference for, for them. Marissa, I heard you were a great volunteer, a star volunteer at the National Braille Press. Um, what are the, some of the ways that you help out there, and what do you enjoy being a volunteer there? Well, I've actually been a volunteer at the National Braille Press since the year 2006 when I first started volunteering with uh, helping out with the Braille Press uh, laughing hands-on hands-on uh, event yeah like the braille press gala yeah. um and oh, it's a gala it's a gala event it's called um laughing for literacy and basically i help out with um their i help what what like special events coordinating uh, she's, she's been on stage I've from the very young age. Yeah. <laughs> she's given uh, talks to the audience and, and so forth she's yes. been quite amazing yeah. and filming public service announcements and volunteering and putting together board books in braille 
That's awesome. Just, and now, obviously, you enjoy it. She's enjoyed because she was talking a, a lot about that. Um, now, Brian, what can people do to get involved? Because, again, there is a lack of knowledge. But I'm sure there's some people watching now who said, you know what, I didn't know, and I want to get involved right. um, with this. And I know we're going to put up some of the information to get involved, but how would you recommend folks to do that? Well, uh, first, first, I'd recommend anybody in the greater Boston area come by and have a tour because we do tours for the public. And oh, you do? I think it's a, a really amazing experience to see how Braille is made. It's quite a lab laborious process, but interesting. And we have kids and adults love it. Uh, that's one way to get connected. Our, certainly our website, which you put up, yep. mbp.org, talks about how you can get involved, how you can help. We're a nonprofit. We need support all of us. Yeah. To, Build books, make technology cheaper for the future for for Braille and. and uh, we couple couple things I want to show. Um, what does this do? I'm going to ask the expert. Okay, I, 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 I will defer to the expert here, <laughs> okay. Marissa. What I'm, I'm putting it in front of you. What does sure. this do? Uh, well, first of all, this is called a uh, Braille Note Apex, and it's basically a mini Braille computer. It has a lot of the functions that a a uh, full functioning laptop would have, such as email, internet, um, a word processor, Excel, a PowerPoint viewer. It has so many awesome. different, yeah. So I can um, so I can s s send you a little message on Facebook, and you'll be able to get it. Yes. And you'll, you'll, you will, will, if I request you on Facebook, will you actually accept me? Why not? Sure. Okay, good, <laughs> deal, and, deal, and, deal. And you can even connect the uh, Braille Note Apex with Bluetooth to the phone. Uh -huh. She, so. She's way ahead of the game here. She's, yeah. She knows yeah. her stuff. There's, we have a great shot of this uh, tech excellent tech, tech uh, device. Yeah, we've got there. And uh, Brian, thank you so much for, for thank coming you for along. giving us time. Um, yeah, we'll we'll, so we'll do much. this again next year, and we'll you know we'll, we'll throughout the year if we can um, do some more stuff. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you so much for having me. You were a great guest. Uh,